Welcome to True Crime Case Files, the podcast that delves into the darkest corners of criminal investigations. In today's episode, we uncover the chilling story of Laura Wilkie. Set in Ocala, Florida, during the scorching month of July in 2007, this is a tale of jealousy, manipulation, and a shocking twist that no one saw coming. Laura Wilkie, age 35, was a journalist with an unwavering determination to expose corruption. Running her blog, Ocala After Dark, she fearlessly investigated local true crime stories and political figures. Laura possessed a sharp wit and infectious laughter that drew people to her. In her spare time, she enjoyed painting landscapes and exploring the hidden gems of the city. During the hot summer of July 2007, Ocala was buzzing with activity. The city's annual music festival, Ocala Jam Fest, brought together music lovers from all over the state. Laura, always on the lookout for a captivating story, attended the festival, documenting the vibrant atmosphere and interviewing both the up-and-coming and established bands. Her blog post about the event garnered attention from music enthusiasts and fellow journalists alike. But Laura's true passion lay in exposing the underbelly of the city. She dug deep into the lives of local politicians, unearthing scandals, and shining a light on their questionable dealings. Her investigative pieces, such as the mayor's hidden secrets and the dark side of Ocala's elite, became the talk of the town. The local newspaper, Ocala Gazette, even featured her work on the front page, acknowledging her relentless pursuit of truth. Laura's determination, however, came with risks. She received anonymous threats and warnings to stay away from certain individuals. Yet, she remained undeterred, convinced that the truth needed to be revealed. Her latest investigation involved a prominent car dealership owner, Jonathan Range Rover Reed, who was rumored to have ties to organized crime. Laura delved into his background, following a trail of suspicious transactions and connections that led her deeper into the dangerous underworld. Little did Laura know her relentless pursuit of justice would have dire consequences. On a sweltering July afternoon, she received a tip about a secret meeting between Reed and a corrupt city council member. Determined to capture the evidence, Laura set up surveillance near a local coffee shop, Brood Awakening. As she discreetly snapped photographs, she had no idea that someone was poisoning her, eventually leaving her bedridden and, finally, dead. On the scorching morning of July 12, 2007, tragedy struck the quiet city of Ocala, Florida. At precisely 9 a.m., Jay Wilkie, the husband of renowned journalist Laura Wilkie, made a horrifying discovery that would forever change his life. The day had started like any other in the Wilkie household. The sun beat down mercilessly on the small suburban neighborhood, as residents sought refuge in the coolness of their air-conditioned homes. But little did Jay know that this day would mark the beginning of a dark and perplexing chapter in his life. As Jay entered the bedroom, he was met with a sight that would haunt him for the rest of his days. There, lying motionless on the neatly made bed, was Laura, his beloved wife. Her once vibrant eyes were now closed forever, and her body lay still, as if frozen in time. The room was filled with an eerie silence, broken only by Jay's gasp of disbelief. The authorities were immediately summoned to the scene, their sirens piercing the otherwise tranquil neighborhood. As they meticulously combed through the room, searching for any clues that could shed light on this mysterious death, the air was thick with tension and uncertainty. In the days following Laura's untimely demise, the media frenzy surrounding the case reached a fever pitch. Headlines screamed with speculation, and armchair detectives dissected every detail, desperately trying to piece together the puzzle. News outlets like the Ocala Gazette and the Florida Times Union dedicated countless column inches to the investigation, as the city held its breath, waiting for answers. As the investigation continued, the city of Ocala held its breath, anxiously awaiting the day when the truth behind Laura Wilkie's death would finally be unveiled. But for now, the answers remained elusive, shrouded in a web of secrecy and unanswered questions. In the heart of Ocala, a city known for its picturesque landscapes and vibrant community, a shocking crime took place that would leave the town in a state of disbelief. Laura Wilkie, a respected journalist and fearless investigator, met a tragic end on the scorching morning of July 12, 2007. Detectives Olivia Gressel and Mark Hastur, 
renowned for their meticulous approach to investigations, swiftly arrived at the scene. The Ocala Police Department was determined to solve this heinous crime and bring justice to Laura and her grieving loved ones. As they entered the house, a sense of eerie calm hung in the air. There were no signs of forced entry, suggesting that the killer had either been known to Laura or possessed a level of cunning that allowed them to gain access undetected. The detectives meticulously combed through every inch of the crime scene, searching for any clue that could shed light on Laura's untimely demise. The house appeared immaculately clean, as if someone had meticulously tidied up after the crime. However, their attention was soon drawn to the cause of death, poisoning. The exact substance used remained a mystery, leaving the investigators puzzled and determined to uncover the truth. With a keen eye for detail, the detectives photographed every inch of the crime scene, capturing potential DNA samples and any other evidence that could potentially lead them to the killer. They knew that in order to solve this perplexing case, they would need to leave no stone unturned. As the investigation unfolded, the town of Ocala was gripped with a sense of unease. The investigation into Laura Wilkie's murder would prove to be a complex puzzle, one that would challenge the detective's skills and test their resolve. As the summer heat continued to bear down on Ocala, the search for the truth intensified, leaving the town anxiously awaiting the day when justice would finally be served. The initial focus of the investigation turned towards Jay Wilkie, a 49-year-old man who owned a flourishing gardening supply store in Ocala, Florida. Known for his friendly demeanor and charm, Jay was a familiar face in the community, often seen mingling with customers and offering expert advice on horticulture. However, beneath this amiable facade, there were whispers of a darker side. Detectives Olivia Gressel and Mark Hastur, leading the investigation, delved into Jay's relationship with his wife Laura, searching for any clues that could shed light on a possible motive. They meticulously pieced together the puzzle of their marriage, uncovering a history of turbulence and hidden tensions. Friends and acquaintances were interviewed, and a pattern of arguments and heated exchanges emerged. As the detectives delved deeper into Jay's personal life, they discovered a series of text messages exchanged between him and Laura in the weeks leading up to her tragic demise. The messages were from Laura begging Jay to not go near her, something that obviously indicated cracks in the foundation of their marriage. The detectives, determined to uncover the truth, obtained a warrant to search Jay's phone records, hoping to find more evidence that could connect him to Laura's murder. Simultaneously, the investigators scoured the city for any potential witnesses who may have seen or heard something on the day of the crime. They examined surveillance footage from nearby establishments, hoping to catch a glimpse of any suspicious individuals lurking in the vicinity of Laura's home. As the case gained media attention, tips flooded in from concerned citizens, each one meticulously followed up on by the diligent detectives. Days turned into weeks, and the investigation seemed to hit a dead end. The detectives meticulously reviewed every piece of evidence, re-examining the crime scene photographs and the DNA samples collected. They consulted with forensic experts, hoping for a breakthrough that would crack the case wide open. Despite the mounting pressure, Jay Wilkie vehemently maintained his innocence. He hired a high-profile defense attorney, who spoke to the media on his behalf, proclaiming his client's unwavering belief that the truth would prevail. Clara Pointer, a 28-year-old co-worker and close friend of Laura Wilkie, emerged as a significant person of interest in the ongoing investigation into Laura's untimely death. Clara, like Laura, was a journalist, contributed articles for Laura's blog Ocala After Dark. She was known for her ambition and relentless pursuit of success. Mutual friends whispered about her burning desire to be the head of Ocala After Dark, the popular blog that Laura had built from the ground up. It was believed that Clara's envy of Laura's achievements may have fueled a sinister plot. During the police interrogation, Clara maintained an outwardly calm and collected demeanor skillfully deflecting any suspicions that arose. She vehemently denied any involvement in Laura's murder, claiming that their friendship was genuine and that she had no reason to harm her colleague. Clara, for her part, pointed instead to Jay as the likely killer. She said Laura was deeply afraid of him, blaming him for the illness that led to her death. Clara said Laura repeatedly told her, Don't let my husband near me. He wants me dead. However, the investigators uncovered some intriguing details that cast doubt on Clara's innocence. 
They have obtained surveillance footage from a nearby coffee shop, showing Clara purchasing a bottle of a powerful sedative on the morning of July 12, 2007. The same sedative was found in Laura's system during the autopsy. This evidence, combined with Clara's undeniable ambition and rumored jealousy, raised eyebrows among the authorities. Furthermore, witnesses came forward, claiming that Clara had been overheard making disparaging remarks about Laura's success. One witness, who wished to remain anonymous, reported hearing Clara say, I should be the one in charge of Ocala after dark. Laura doesn't deserve all the attention she's getting. Will Clara Pointer's carefully crafted facade crumble under the weight of the evidence against her? Or is there a hidden accomplice who remains undiscovered? Only time will tell as this gripping true crime case unravels before our eyes. A major breakthrough in the investigation of Laura Wilkie's murder occurred on the afternoon of July 17, 2007. The time was precisely 4 p.m., and the blistering heat of Ocala, Florida, remained relentless. Detectives Olivia Gressel and Mark Hastur stumbled upon a crucial piece of evidence that would send shockwaves through the case. In their relentless pursuit of the truth, the detectives had been meticulously sifting through Laura's digital footprint. It was during this painstaking process that they unearthed a series of emails exchanged between Clara Pointer, a close friend and co-worker of Laura's, and David Yarborough, a private investigator renowned in the Ocala area. These emails provided a startling glimpse into the tangled web of deceit surrounding Laura's murder. Clara, it seemed, had been secretly seducing David to sabotage Laura's investigations. The content of the emails indicated that Laura had hired David to delve into the corrupt underbelly of Ocala's car dealership owner Jonathan, Range Rover Reed, with Clara acting as the intermediary. The detectives were astounded by this revelation. It raised a multitude of questions. What had Laura uncovered that was so dangerous? Who were the individuals involved in this web of corruption? And most importantly, why was Laura targeted? The implications of these emails were far-reaching. They suggested a motive for Clara's potential involvement in Laura's murder. Was she driven by jealousy and a desire to take over Ocala after dark, as rumors had suggested? Or was there something more sinister at play? As the investigation continued to unfold, the detectives were left with a myriad of unanswered questions. What other secrets lay hidden in the depths of Ocala's underbelly? And would they be able to bring Laura's killer to justice? The investigation took an unexpected turn on July 17, 2007, at around 4 p.m., when the Ocala police stumbled upon a series of emails exchanged between Clara Pointer, Laura Wilkie's co-worker and close friend, and David Yarborough, a private investigator hired by Laura to uncover corruption. These emails revealed a connection between Clara and David that raised eyebrows and left investigators scrambling to understand the implications. David Yarborough, a 45-year-old private investigator with a checkered past, had gained a reputation for his resourcefulness and determination in previous cases. He had been involved in Laura's high-profile corruption investigation, which had sent shockwaves through the local political scene. However, whispers began to circulate that David held a personal grudge against Laura for exposing his own misdeeds in the past. As the police interrogated David, his reaction was one of anger and frustration. He vehemently denied any involvement in Laura's murder, maintaining his innocence with unwavering conviction. The investigators delved into David's motives and connections to Clara, seeking to uncover any potential links that could shed light on the case. During the interrogation, David's past came under scrutiny. It was revealed that he had a history of working on high-stakes cases involving corruption and political scandals. Some of his previous clients included prominent figures in the local government, making him a well-known name in the realm of investigative journalism. However, as the investigation into Laura's murder unfolded, David's reputation began to crumble. The police dug deeper into David's personal life, interviewing his acquaintances and examining his financial records. They discovered that David had fallen on hard times in the months leading up to Laura's murder. He had been struggling to make ends meet, with mounting debts and a desperate need for a big break. This revelation raised suspicions about his involvement in Laura's death and added fuel to the growing fire of speculation surrounding the case. As the investigation continued, the police were determined to uncover the truth behind Laura Wilkie's untimely demise. With each new piece of evidence, the web of suspects grew more intricate and the motives became murkier. The clock was ticking 
and the Ocala community held its breath, waiting for justice to prevail. In a shocking turn of events, the investigation into the untimely death of Laura Wilkie, the fearless journalist behind the renowned blog Ocala After Dark, took a sinister turn. After days of meticulous detective work, the police uncovered the true mastermind behind Laura's murder. Clara Pointer, a co-worker and friend who harbored a deep-seated jealousy and desire for power. Clara, a 28-year-old ambitious individual, had long coveted Laura's position as the head of Ocala after dark. Rumors of her envy and resentment towards Laura's success had been circulating for months, but no one could have fathomed the extent of Clara's treachery. The police's breakthrough in the case came on July 17, 2007, when a series of emails between Clara and David Yarborough, a private investigator hired by Laura, were discovered. These emails shed light on Clara's nefarious plans to seduce and manipulate David, who had developed an unhealthy sexual obsession with Laura. David, a 45-year-old private investigator with a checkered past, had a personal vendetta against Laura for exposing his previous misdeeds. However, his twisted infatuation with her led him to inadvertently aid Clara in her sinister plot. The investigation revealed that Clara had been secretly poisoning Laura's coffee for months, gradually weakening her. Laura's haunting words, Don't let my husband near me. He wants me dead, were uttered in her delirium as Clara's poison took its toll. It is a chilling reminder of the depths of Clara's manipulation and the tragic fate that awaited Laura. But Clara's web of deceit did not end there. She had exploited both Laura's husband, Jay Wilkie, and David, utilizing her sexuality and their vulnerabilities to further her sinister agenda. Clara knew that Jay's troubled marriage and volatile temper would make him an easy target for suspicion. She carefully orchestrated the murder to frame him, all while maintaining her facade of innocence. As the investigation unfolded, the police pieced together Clara's manipulative tactics, exposing the extent of her exploitation. With the evidence against her mounting, the police moved in to arrest Clara at her apartment. Her calculated use of sexuality and the vulnerabilities of those around her showcased a level of cunning that is truly chilling. The trial that followed the shocking murder of Laura Wilkie was nothing short of a gripping spectacle. The courtroom was packed with eager spectators, eager to witness justice being served. District Attorney Unity Collins led the prosecution, presenting a compelling argument that left no room for doubt. She meticulously laid out the evidence, highlighting Clara Pointer's jealousy and calculated actions. The defense attorney, Esmeralda Constable, fought tooth and nail to cast doubt on the evidence and Clara's motives. She argued that the prosecution's case was built on circumstantial evidence and lacked a smoking gun. However, the weight of the evidence against Clara was overwhelming, leaving the defense with an uphill battle. Emotions ran high as Laura's family took their seats in the courtroom. They had endured months of heartache and uncertainty, desperately seeking justice for their beloved daughter. The trial became a battleground of conflicting narratives, with the prosecution painting Clara as a manipulative mastermind and the defense attempting to humanize her, portraying her as a victim of circumstances. Throughout the trial, the jury listened intently to the testimonies of witnesses, examined the physical evidence, and reviewed the damning emails exchanged between Clara and the private investigator, David Yarborough. The emails revealed Clara's sinister plans and her attempts to manipulate both Jay Wilkie and David. After hours of deliberation, the jury delivered their unanimous verdict, guilty. Clara Pointer was found guilty of first-degree murder and sentenced to 25 years in prison without the possibility of parole. The courtroom erupted in a mix of relief and anguish as Laura's family and friends finally saw justice being served. The impact of the trial rippled through the community, leaving a lasting impression on the residents of Ocala, Florida. The trial became the topic of conversations at local diners and coffee shops, with everyone weighing in on the verdict and its implications. As the trial came to a close, Laura's family and friends were left grappling with the aftermath. The wounds caused by her untimely demise would never fully heal, but the verdict brought them a sense of closure. They could finally begin the process of healing and moving forward, cherishing the memories of Laura and the impact she had on their lives. In the aftermath of the trial, life took on a new normal for all those involved. Jay Wilkie, Laura's husband, who had been falsely accused, felt a mix of relief and grief. 
He sought solace in rebuilding his life, focusing on his gardening supply store and reconnecting with friends and family. Jay found comfort in the support of the Ocala community, who rallied behind him during the trial. He became an advocate for justice reform, using his own experience to raise awareness about wrongful accusations. David Yarborough, the private investigator who had unwittingly aided Clara Pointer in her plot, was consumed by guilt. He dedicated himself to making amends for his misplaced loyalty. David reached out to Laura's family, offering his sincere apologies and assistance in any way he could. He embarked on a personal journey of redemption, vowing to use his investigative skills for good and help other victims of manipulation and deceit. As time passed, the wounds began to heal, but the memory of Laura Wilkie remained etched in the hearts of those who knew her. The trial had exposed the dark underbelly of jealousy and manipulation, but it also showcased the resilience of a community seeking justice. The impact of Laura's life and untimely death would forever serve as a reminder to cherish the truth and stand against those who seek to deceive. And so, we conclude this episode of True Crime Case Files. The haunting words of Laura Wilkie, Don't let my husband near me. He wants me dead, will forever echo in our minds. This tragic tale serves as a reminder of the darkness that can reside within the human heart. Join us next time as we uncover another chilling true crime story, delving into the depths of human nature. Hey, true crime case solvers, interested in more real-life murder mysteries? Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. And do you have any thoughts about this case or have a case of your own you'd like us to investigate? Leave us a comment. Until then, stay safe, true crime case solvers.